happy Mother's Day. I was asked to share some memories of my grandmother, Toshi Seeger. I'm Mariah Seeger DeGear. And I thought I would just take y'all on our morning walk because if you look here, we have a stream and my son playing like he does much of, much of the time. He'll probably fall in before this video is over um, on purpose. It's not deep, not to worry. And here is a stream that grandma, really further, a little further down, but grandma would collect water when they moved up here from the city. Um, and because they didn't have, when they were building the log cabin, if anyone has been up to the property and seen it. So they were building the log cabin and they didn't have running water. And so the stream that I grew up jumping in, <laughs> that my son's growing up jumping in, is the same one that was like functional <laughs> and provided for them. Um, so sharing memories, but also like this that you're looking at, like pretty much summarizes, you know, the outdoor version of my childhood. And I know lots of you are probably stuck behind too many stream or sorry, too many screens during quarantine. And so I thought I would just take you outside with us to give you a little switch up. Um, you know, I was born in the log cabin and raised and spent much of my time during my youth up here. I was homeschooled for a number of years. There was a lot of time that was just the three of us. And during the 90s, I mean, Kirk was still so busy. There was a lot of time it was just grandma and I home, were home. And when I was homeschooled, like homeschooling would be, you know, all of that wonderful mail everyone sent. Um, you know, I got to sort it <laughs> as my homeschooling activity in case any parents need any ideas of things to do. Although like bushels of mail would be coming in every day. They didn't have a staff. They didn't have a secretary or someone else that was doing that. Like it was grandma getting things done along with everything else she was doing. And so it's, I think it's such a good reminder now, especially in this time when people are feeling like so overwhelmed, like I had someone who was doing a lot of the raising of me as a kid who handled it all and like very much in isolation because we we're up on the mountain and we would leave and go into town but really like knew how to like multitask and be productive and I think her brain just understood how systems work and it's something that she definitely taught me and so you know one of I thought on for a long time for memories but one of the like traditions memories like would be around Clearwater Festival and the months leading up to Clearwater Festival were really intense in our house and I remember year after year like I stuffed like all the musician packets <laughs> that all the musicians got right or all the volunteer packets or the litter pickers you know, and sorted all these things out. And grandma would just like, get stuff done. And people were so intimidated by her. Um, I was fortunate enough that I got this really loving experience from the two of them. Like I was, there's a big, pretty big age gap between me and my brother Katama and the older cousins and then the younger cousins. So like, it really was like, I was kind of around to do stuff and I just like got stuff done with them. Um, it's very functional, but to see grandma like she was such a complex human being like I mean she was very loving and nurturing to me and then also like people were so scared of her because when she wanted to get stuff done and execute things she just did she knew how to do it she you know I'm probably offended a lot of people <laughs> in the process um and scared some people and it was awesome right but also there's this aspect like she was a small woman and she just would see something and move forward and just you know it's so important to remember and I know grandpa would say it probably about five percent of the time as you know compared to what he should be that like he wouldn't be a name that anyone knew he wouldn't his songs wouldn't have really had an impact his you know the protesting or the activism you know he would just probably be like an obscure rando old dude who lived on a mountain like he <laughs> it's so important to remember that like she made it happen and so you know the list of things that should be under like her career and her legacy 
is so endless and yet a lot of people don't really know it because we attach so much to the fame that grandpa was but like i'll be honest like he could have just chopped wood <laughs> sing some songs you know he'll probably you know he waited for her to like sort of hand him what mail to do i mean the man could mm, kind of boil an egg not really he learned how to make toast at some point um and i love my grandpa so much like he taught me a lot of like valuable like skills for like living in the woods which is cool um and there's also a piece of like knowing that everything he did was because this woman sacrificed so much and he sacrificed a lot to make that happen but really she sacrificed to make what he would kind of write on a scribble a note and like come up with an idea she would talk to the right people and make the choices that like are hard to make to sort of like how do we get some of this stuff done how do we, those connections happen um and it was you know i have a outrageous amount of respect for who she was and i've learned so much um and then on the flip side i think my favorite memories are days that like she would practice you know self-care if you want to call it now <laughs> and i'm a therapist so i talk about that a lot where she would just leave the phone off the hook and so it didn't ring every 30 seconds like it normally did and we would just go out to the garden for hours or we would you know bake spoon bread or we would make some you know we'd make other breads or you know we'd cook things but like the best is when like we really knew nobody was going to be around and grandma would pull out this box of romance novels and like she loved her romance novel and she had stashes of chocolate around the house like in her sock drawer or like up in the pantry and she would like tell me go to where to find them i thought she did this with everyone i've realized now that as an adult like this like super secretive like delicious wonderful behavior of like fancy chocolates like i got to share in that because i mean i was around <laughs> all the time um and she we would just like enjoy the sun in the afternoon and like read books and andre would bring us chocolate from the culinary institute so like and we would just enjoy that and then she'd like hear a car pull up and like stash it away so like nobody really would ever see her like not working which is a problematic <laughs> behavior but she <laughs> she just worked you know and now that i am uh, a parent and a wife right and a therapist and all these other things it's astonishing to me i mean we would be home and like yeah some you look at the calendar and some days a film crew would be coming or some days oh grandpa has an interview you know everyone has to be quiet grandpa has an interview with some radio show at this time and we'd like make sure to remind him and things like that but some days we would just be enjoying you know just getting stuff done around the house cleaning the house and like oh look there's 10 extra people for dinner and she would relax like I can't say that most of us can just do that and come up with these elaborate amazing meals um and just provide for people you know I I was lucky and fortunate enough to see grandparents that work so hard that like people would need something and they would step in and like they never talked about it they didn't post about it somewhere <laughs> you know like the amount of people that because I was a pretty quiet kid you know i got to like witness asking for things from them or needing support from them and it was without question like the way you treated people was in this way that was like firm but loving and caring and you know probably lacking a lot of boundaries <laughs> because of it um that was just who they are were you know that's the legacy that they left you know we talk so much about the music and the music's really important we want to keep that alive but like the energy they left around how we treat people like that's something that i absolutely want to keep alive um and going back to this fundraiser now that you've sat here and listened to the ramblings you know of a seager <laughs> grandkid um is like this is why like you want to be able to be outside with you know great grandchildren down the road you want to have an environment that is accessible to them and you know blue skies and sunshine and fresh water um and like i'm living that like i understand that 
and it's something that like I saw these people sacrifice so much to make sure other people were able to do that you know my son loves swimming in the river pool in the Hudson and you know he's been out on the boat a couple times and it's just it really you know seeing like this is why they did this um and so hopefully I know a lot of the trails on the mountain are close <laughs> but hopefully as the weather warms up and you know hopefully everyone is able to stay healthy um or you know fight fight off all the stuff going on right now to keep a little sanity going you know you're able to also enjoy beautiful outdoor you know all the things that they fought for and i'm gonna go because this guy's now <laughs> i think tangled in a string yep so happy mother's day thanks for donating to clear water bye Oh, mother, can you forgive me now? My spirit. 
Spirit is returning more and more every day. Oh, mother, can you forgive me now? Sold you for a ticket on this death filled train. Oh, mother, can you forgive me now? My spirit is returning more and more every day. Some of you are seeing us through the miracle of technology right now. Uh, David Burns here and my son Jacob Burns. Hello. We are very happy that Fred Gillen asked us to participate in the celebration of Toshi Seeger. Uh, and we hope that those of you out there, if you enjoy what you hear, or even if you don't, please donate some money to Clearwater. They sure could use it. water and oil don't mix but they don't know a salad maker's tricks with a little this and that the world to come may be like a song with a little this and that a little this and that and everyone will want to sing along a little this and that A little distance Ain't no sin A little sky lark Isn't gonna give us all a grin You know There's a plan For the people to win With a little this and that A little this and that A little this and that Yeah A little this and that A little this and that
Pete wrote that last song for Toshi. She was always mixing things together, whether it was stone soup or a giant cobbler. There's some people who said about Toshi that she did not know how to cook for less than 12. Tell your Toshi story, Dad. Before we go into this. All right. Well, it's really not a story. It's just something Toshi said. You see, Toshi was a pretty pi private person. She didn't speak in public often and didn't even give many interviews. But one day I learned there was an event down in Garrison where they were honoring Pete and Toshi Seeger and they were both going to speak and Toshi was going to go first to introduce Pete. And she said the shortest, bestest speech I had ever seen. Paraphrase, she said, Hi, my name is Toshi Seeger. Most people have a job where they work eight hours a day, five days a week, 48 weeks a year. For the past 40 years, I've had the same job. Only my job is 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 52 weeks a year. So now I introduce to you my husband, Pete Seeger. You know who he is. He's the guy who goes all around the country singing for women's rights in the eight hour day. <laughs> Yeah, I, uh, I uh, went to interview Pete when I was just uh, 12 or 13, in, or maybe 11 or 12 in, in middle school. And, uh, and then I went to interview Toshi a few years later. And Toshi said, oh, Pete's over there. Go interview him. <laughs> and I said, no, I'm here for you, Toshi. I want to I wanna learn about your life. And, uh, and I, she told me a little bit, but she told me to go ask my grandmother next. And, uh, and we, the project went on from there, but... It's always, always a great, great thing.
everybody thinks we're wrong. But who are they to judge us? Simply cause our hair is a little different. Too short, too long. You know we've got to find a way to bring some understanding here today. Picket lines and picket signs Don't punish me with brutality Come and talk to me So we can see Hey, what's going on? Tell me what's going on I'll tell you what's going on Just tell me what's going on You may say I'm a dreamer But I'm not the only one I hope someday you will join us That was a fun one. That was on my uh, father's 1999 recording with uh, Perry and Randy. Uh, yeah. Dave Perry Randy was called. Yeah, remembering or trying to remember an old arrangement there. Um, Randy Harris had a wonderful way of singing that song. It's a great song, great medley. What's going on? It's still timely today. Let's do an old statement.
song called Dink Song about Dink who lived uh, and wrote that song and they went back, Alan Lomax I think went, is it Alan Lomax then? They went back and looked yep. for her and she they pointed up to the graveyard and that's the only song we have from her. It's still not bad. Yeah, I'm just checking your time. Okay. And we have about 14 minutes. That should be enough to do I guess um, it's about three songs. Yeah. Hope you're listening out there. Hope you're enjoying. Yeah. We'd be ashamed if we didn't pull out the banjo for a Toshi tribute. A secret tribute. Thanks everyone out there for listening. And thanks to Fred Gillen and the others who organize this. Riding shotgun down the windy plain Passing towns without no need Never thought that luck would take us that far From where we are, homes we never knew My mind sees the open road As you ride, I ride there Maybe you can see them too Riding shotgun down the avenues If you want, you can see them too I feel as empty as an open drum Without a place to call my home My mind sees the old As you ride, I ride there too If you close your eyes, maybe you can see them too
It's one of Jacob's great original songs. He's He's got so many that it's hard to choose what to do any given time, but... I think I'd like to hear one of yours now, Dad, if you if that'd be all right with you. Oh, yeah? Okay. Sure. My dad, uh, I learned a lot of, most of everything I know in songwriting from from my father. Oh, and he, you've got and, your own thing going, Jacob. And uh, this song he made a video for about a week or two ago, I, I believe, now, and uh, about the, the health care workers and just the times we're in uh, right now with this COVID-19 uh, thing going around. So I'd like him to do it. I'll back him up on that one. The chorus to this song came to me 20 years ago when 9-11 happened. I just felt there was some healing needed. Uh, but I just couldn't think of any verses. But then it came back to me now and I finished it up. went a little out. On these warm days, uh, both instruments <laughs> tend to do a little moving.
I know that in the distance blows a wind from another time. I still smell its flowers and I can taste its sweeter wine. But the boats all brought the bad news with the tide. And in the halls the martyrs laughed and cried. time for one more if you're out there in uh, Facebook land uh, we're gonna try an experiment here with a new song of mine a new old song of mine like like my father said that was a new old song of his that he reworked and uh, we're just gonna do this a uh, uh, song where might we might uh, release it uh, further down the road but uh, made a recording of it the other day and uh, we're gonna try it out to end the, our set it's about my hometown of Beacon which was also uh, Pete and Toshi's hometown I mean uh, you know they lived here for the last uh, wow uh, 40 50 see 1949 to 2000 and, and uh, 14 right so how many years is that you There's do the math, math out there yeah In the house where I lived Back when I was a kid In my favorite cookie cutter neighborhood With the grass so green and fair Like something could be that rare Out where the pavement never goes And if I could just sit You know I'd find my way back that old cookie cutter neighborhood. Huh. Well, all the things I learned when I was here, they all meant much. I learned when I was young. And though, though the voice is good, I feel there's something we could have done for that cookie cutter neighborhood. Something could be that rare Out where the pavement never goes And if I could just sit You know I'd find my way back To that old cookie cutter neighborhood To that old cookie cutter neighborhood Thanks for listening Please donate to Clearwater. Thanks to everybody. Yes.